All right, everybody. It is also time for me to do what I do every year, uh, which is complain about the Grammys. You know, I feel kind of bad about this because I don't want to just be that guy that every year I just complain about how the Grammy nominations suck, you know, that they should be nominating more younger artists and blah, 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 blah. I don't want to be the same person doing that. I don't want to say the same thing every year, but damn it, I don't have a choice. You chose this, not me. Grammy nominating committee, this is your fault, not mine. Don't blame me. And as usual, they suck. They suck. So let's look at them. And uh, that's right. Spoiler warning. At least we can agree on something. At least Red Hot Chili Peppers aren't being nominated this year. Uh, well, let's look at what the nominations are and uh, check out some of the reactions to them. I'll give you my thoughts as well. And also, I want to thank Crossrope for sponsoring this video to tell you about their new Bluetooth connected workout experience called AMP. You get guided workouts for your fitness goals, real time feedback on your jumping and access to a library of over 2000 workouts. AMP is also a fraction of the cost of most connected fitness experiences. The AMP set is $199 and the monthly subscription is $999. Plus it's super portable, which is awesome if you travel a lot. You can do your workouts through an iPad at home or on your phone when you're on the go. And you still get the same quality and benefits of weighted jump rope training that Cross Rope is known for. And with AMP, you get actual data to serve you a personalized workout experience so you can find the right intensity level for you and track your progress. And if you don't have a lot of space to jump or you're a bit intimidated by the weighted ropes, no worries. Cross Rope also offers these cool ropeless attachments that you can clip into your handles. So if you wanna check it out for a limited time, click my special link in the description box and save 15% off your purchase with code FINN, F-I-N-N. -N. So first of all, for the best metal performance, we have Bad Man by Disturbed. Look, I actually don't think Disturbed is a terrible band, but it's like they were in their prime over 20 years ago. Like, ooh, wah, ah, ah, I don't even remember the name of that. Oh, Down With The Sickness. That came out in what, 99 or 2000? That was 23 years ago. Okay, and look, no disrespect to Disturbed. I think David Draymond seems like an awesome guy. And David, if you happen to be watching this by any means, you are invited over to our house at any time. You're welcome to come over and watch some UFC or football, or if you want to just come over and, you know, enjoy a delicious... Uh, Costco fake vitamin water with my wife and I while we play with our son and you know chat about current events whatever you want man me casa es su casa I am a fan of you as a human being I loved your cover of uh, Sounds of Silence but it's time to pass the torch Disturbs time in the sun has passed that's all I'm saying that's all I'm saying no disrespect David but Disturbed has been past their prime for decades okay phantom of the opera by ghost i don't have a problem with this one you know ghost is relatively new by metal standards they're only 13 years old i think they came out in 2010 and i do think they're a good band so i don't necessarily have a problem with this i think that's fair uh, nothing wrong with that 72 seasons by metallica or as uh, as i remember them being called uh, during their first grammy nomination metallica look metallica obviously legendary band but does anybody think that out of every metal song released this year that metallica needs to be on the list i'll tell you what i bet you that even the guys in metallica when they see themselves being nominated they're like come on guys just <laughs> You don't have to do this. You know, it's like, you know what the company party, you know, the company Christmas party, when they give out like uh, a gold watch to the salesman that's been with the company for 10 years and like, all right, everybody, let's, uh, let's bring Jeff up here and congratulate him on 10 years with the company. Jeff, here's your uh, $75 gold watch. And he's like, no, 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 come on now. It's, it's, oh guys, come on, please don't. I feel like that's Metallica. What do they have to prove? And obviously, creatively, their best years are long, long, long behind them. Same thing with Slipknot, Hive Mind by Slipknot. Slipknot, absolutely legendary band. A lot of great songs, a lot of great albums, but this is not it. Slipknot, again, they have been past their prime. I would say like the last time Slipknot was really good was, I uh, forget the name of the album that uh, Psychosocial was on. I think that's probably the last time that Slipknot was like, really like grammy worthy in my opinion all hope is gone that's right yeah and that was 2008 or 2009 i think 
quite a while ago. Gray chapter was good. Yeah, gray chapter wasn't bad. But anyway, the point is Slipknot very past their prime as well. Again, nothing but respect for them. Legends. But it's 2023. Is Slipknot really who you want to be representing metal? And now the last one I think is great. Jaded by Spirit Box. This is what a metal nominee should be. So I want to talk for a little bit about what I think the criteria for a Grammy nomination should be. This is the Recording Academy. The objective for the Grammys is not just to recognize you know, the best recording of the year. That's certainly a part of it, but that's not all of it. Part of it is about drawing attention to the music industry as a whole, and in particular, to highlight artists that they think are relevant and important to sort of draw attention to all these genres for the health of the entire recorded music industry, okay? That's the point of this, is to help the recorded music industry stay relevant stay in the spotlight and continue to grow, okay? This is like a professional organization. And again, to use the analogy of like a company party, you don't give an award to the guy that was the top salesman of 2003. You give the award to the person who was the top sales performer of the current year. And so I think that the criteria to me should be, number one, of course, is how good is the music? Because, you know, we need to be nominating stuff that's actually good. Um, but I think also they need to be uh, nominating artists who are relevant in the current year. Spirit Box is new blood. They should honor new talent. And this is the right opportunity. Yes, that is exactly what I think. Relevance, in my opinion, should be an extremely important criteria. Otherwise, you're going to see exactly what you see here, which is a bunch of legacy artists and one new artist and one like kind of new artist, which is Ghost. The way that this works is there's a nominating committee which picks these songs and then the entire recording academy votes on the five nominees and they're the ones that pick the winner. I understand if people vote on legacy artists because a lot of the members of the recording academy are old or aren't into metal. And so I kind of get that. Yeah, it's unfortunate that most of the voters are older and especially in the rock voting demographic, they need younger people to become members to start voting. That's the only way it will change. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. You got to have new blood in these or else the awards will just start to be a joke and nobody will take them seriously. And then the Grammys will become meaningless. Now, next in the best rock performance category, we've got Sculptures of Anything Goes by Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys are a great band, but again, they've been around for what, 25 years now? 20, 20 some years? Black Pumas. I don't know who Black Pumas is. Boy Genius, not strong enough. Fine. Yeah, I mean, Boy Genius is a relevant new artist. I like that. Rescued by Foo Fighters. You know, again, Foo Fighters are 30 years old at this point. Foo Fighters started in 1994. That was almost 30 years ago. And then we've got Metallica in the rock category as well. <sighs> It's like, come on, man, it's dad rock. And I wanted to see, by the way, if the Grammys were always this bad. Because again, I don't want to just be the guy getting up here and complaining every year about how it's a bunch of like old head stuff. And, you know, because I thought, well, maybe it was always like that. Maybe the Grammys were always this clueless and I just didn't remember it. And so I looked just sort of randomly. I thought, well, let's see. Let's see who was getting nominated back in 2004. And it turns out back in 2004, it was quite a bit better. In the rock category, best rock performance by a duo or group with vocal, we've got Vertigo by U2. Okay, YouTube was kind of a legacy artist even at this point, but all right. Elvis Costello, I would say that's definitely like dad stuff. That was, that was old. But then we've got Franz Ferdinand. Uh, I hate this song, Taking Me Out by Franz Ferdinand. One of the most irritating songs of all time, but at least it was new and relevant. Like, totally a valid choice. American Idiot by Green Day, also a great choice. Uh, and Somebody Told Me by The Killers, also a great choice. So I would say three of these were fantastic choices. Franz Ferdinand, Green Day, and The Killers. U2 is like borderline. Elvis Costello is bad. But three out of five, I would say that's pretty decent. You know, we've got three like newer relevant artists, in, you know, 20 years ago. And then best hard rock performance. We've got Slither by Velvet Revolver, Incubus, uh, Megalomaniac, Some Kind of Monster by Metallica, Feeling Way Too Damn Good by Nickelback. Uh, I don't actually know that song. And Duality by Slipknot. I would say solid choices. You know, Metallica, a little bit debatable there, but at least they weren't like totally, completely 
outside of their prime at that point. So I would say decent to good picks in hard rock. At least these are all relevant. And then the best metal performance, I was very surprised by this. Whiplash by Motorhead. Okay, I know that a lot of people are going to get upset at me, but I would say Motorhead at this point were washed up dad rock and probably should not be nominated for a Grammy. A lot of people are going to be upset at me for that, but sorry, but Motorhead was not relevant in 2004. But then we have Nymphetamine by Cradle of Filth. Not my favorite Cradle of Filth song, but a relatively new-ish band. Definitely relevant. I'm on board with it. Live for This by Hatebreed. I had no idea that Hatebreed was nominated for a Grammy. Uh, actually, <laughs> that's very surprising to me, but a solid choice. The End of Heartache by Kill Switch Engage. A fantastic choice that absolutely... I want to know who won. Um, it definitely should have won. And then Vermilion by Slipknot also an excellent choice i would say these metal nominations in 2004 solid the only one you know i oh the bold ones are winners okay yeah so so motorhead won all right so the the old head band won fair enough but you know these are fine nothing wrong with these the point is it was not always this shitty and washed up but anyway yeah so those are my thoughts on those and you, you get the idea the best rock album whatever blah 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 so I thought we could check out the fans' reactions. Let's check out what other people are saying about this. Let's see if I am the old man screaming in a cloud, complaining about the Grammy nominees yet again. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe the fans are more on board with this than I am. Maybe I am the one that's out of touch. We'll see. This person says, anyways, the Grammys never properly represent any of any category of music in the Academy is a joke. There were so many breakout alternative artists that didn't make the cut and forget about the Grammys ever taking metal music seriously. Tear it all down and try again. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. Okay, this person says, oh, hey, all my drafts are gone. Anyways, it's nearing that season where I'm angry about the Grammys completely blindsiding the rock and metal genre because it's not as marketable as pop and rap is. I mean, that's the truth. And you know that I'm usually not one to sort of beat the drum of like, oh, you know, they're ignoring us instead of pop and rap, but it's true. If you look at the nominees in um, pop and rap, song of the year, we've got Billie Eilish, Dua Lipa, John Baptiste, Lana Del Rey, Miley Cyrus, Olivia Rodrigo, SZA, Taylor Swift. You know, in rap, we've got Drake, and 21 Savage, Killer Mike, Metro Boomin, Nas, and Travis Scott. And then in country, we've got Brothers Osborne, Kelsey Ballerini, Laney Wilson, Tyler Childers, and Zach Bryant. By and large, you'll see that in the other categories, there's a lot more like newer artists represented. And uh, I think that's because the people who vote on this stuff really are a bunch of old people that don't get it. Pop categories are cooked, best rock album is bad. Song of the Year nominees are terrible. Feels like the Grammy rock nominations are exclusively legacy bands for a decade plus now, plus some IDK, the war on drugs sprinkled in every couple years or so. Yeah. Paramore for best alternative performance and best rock album Grammys. That's fucking right. Well, look, I'm glad that Paramore is getting nominated, but once again, Paramore is a 20 year old band. They're a legacy band at this point. You know, the people have asked, who do I think? should be nominated. Well, let's see. Matt Shadows from Avenged Sevenfold. I asked who should be nominated. He said 100 Gex. I agree with that. That's exactly the kind of band that should be nominated. Very, very relevant. They make great music, super creative. Um, I think like 100 Gex is absolutely the kind of artist that should have been nominated. I completely agree with that. Speaking of Avenged Sevenfold, I also don't disagree with this. Seth said I'd put Life is But a Dream up for overall album of the year. The fact that it didn't get a nod in a rock or metal category is wild to me. I don't think that that is the very best album of their catalog, but I certainly agree that Avenged Sevenfold deserves to be not. I mean, look, if we're going to nominate Washed Up Slipknot and Washed Up Disturbed, then I think we can nominate, you know, Avenged Sevenfold, uh, you know, who maybe are not necessarily in their prime. I think that'd be fair. Okay, so this is a good point. Morgoth Beats uh, said, as a voting member, you can only pick three categories to vote from. So the people who end up picking to vote for rock and metal are older because all the younger voters pick rap and pop to vote for. There you go. I mean, I think that explains a lot of it. A lot of people also suggested these artists, Knocked Loose, Bad Omens, and Sleep Token all deserved it. I don't know that I would nominate Knocked Loose, to be honest. I like Knocked Loose, but to be perfectly honest, I don't think their music is like Grammy worthy. Bad Omens and Sleep Token, I absolutely agree with that, especially with Sleep Token 
and bad omens like having such like breakout moments in the past year i would absolutely agree with that like sleep token for sure deserves it over fucking disturbed yeah edema that's what we need <laughs> we need edema another artist i don't know if they released anything that would qualify in the right time frame but polyphia absolutely agree with polyphia they for sure deserve a nomination very relevant musically brilliant i completely agree with that another one that's kind of interesting that some some people brought up was uh jelly roll you know jelly roll put out some rock songs he's very commercially successful he's very relevant i can't say that i'm personally a fan of his music necessarily but i totally like i'd be totally on board with that oh he got some nominations in bigger categories okay well that's good but here's the thing like I said earlier, the reason why this matters is not just because, you know, I want a band I like to get nominated. From the perspective of the music industry in general and the Recording Academy in particular, the Grammy Awards have to mean something. I understand you're not going to please everybody. Like, I get that. And like with awards shows, people always complain. I understand that. But... I mean, it becomes like just a laughing stock if every year the bands that are getting nominated are like 30 or 40 years old. It becomes just a laughing stock. This has to be addressed because Grammys, right or wrong, they mean something. Like, personally, I would say, who really cares about an award at the end of the day? It's just a piece of metal. What actually matters is like, are people listening to your music? Are people coming to your shows? Like, that's what matters. But at the same time, you know, in the media and in the industry and stuff, you know, awards do mean something. So I really think this is a problem. It's a real problem for the state of rock and metal and for the credibility of the Grammys. So hopefully someone over there is working on this. Hopefully someone can fix it. Hopefully next year, you know, we'll see some nominees in the category that are like under 40. Wouldn't that be refreshing? But we shall see. Uh, and uh, join me in a few months for when they do the awards show and announce the winners so I can complain about the winners uh, and get some more views out of that too. So we'll see you then. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's... Uh, Let's bring Jeff up here.